you want to say what God says. Every time you something is, is comes at you contrary, say what God says. Job 3.25, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me is what Job said. So, so greatly feared, greatly focused on the negative to a point where he started to speak it out and it manifested. He was, he, he was going to give offerings for his kids not to trip. So imagine I'm sowing for something not to happen, not giving offerings for what I want to happen. <laughs> so but my picture is what I don't want, not what I do want. So I'm having faith for what I don't want. The fact that that's all I'm focusing on, the worst case scenario, right? And that's, uh, that's dangerous. See, see, the goal is the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. So when it comes to prayer, we don't want the flesh to come into that boardroom or into that meeting with God. Because the flesh it has peace in, in, in what I call a safe talk. The flesh always just wants everything safe, everything easy, everything without path of least resistance. So that's why it's just talking about, well, I feel like this, you know, we do that, this is going to happen. I feel like, and you almost don't want, you don't want flesh in the room because it's in a way. You're trying to operate in faith, but your flesh is trying to be safe. And what, we want to, the thing about safe words, the safe words are not dependent on God's backing. Remember we, we read through Matthew 18 and it says, whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What that means is, when I bind something up in this earth, what's being bound? The adversary is going, you can't do that. So they go back and they check the record in heaven and the record authenticates and certifies that what I bound should be bound. Because, see, I, I spoke in faith in an agreement with God. So it's saying that God is backing Everything that I do. You know, you, you try to make a transaction and they call, check the bank. This person's trying to buy an uh, uh, $85,000 car. Can he? Oh, yeah, he got that. It's okay. No, 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 no. No, that check's good. So when we speak things in this earth realm, are they checking in heaven? They're going, oh, no, no, that faith's good. I'm backing that. See, whatsoever we bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. If we're speaking safe words, not faith words, faith words are backed up in heaven. Safe words are not. Safe words don't need no backing. Because you, 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 you see it. You know, well, I'm believing God for a monitor on the left side of the platform. I'm just, I'm just going to believe God for this. Really? Are you really believing God? It's right there. <laughs> I'm going to wait until it look like, so you see Minister Lamar pull up and, and you look through the front window and there's a monitor sitting up on his passenger seat. And you go, well, you know, right now, you walk in here, you go, right now, I, I, I just believe God will give us a monitor. Really? You believe in God or you saw it in his car? <laughs> it's like, so if I see something that looks like it might happen close to, now I say I have faith? So I'm going to do what God says in his word when it looks like the coast is clear, when everything is together. The scripture says, he that studies the wind shall not sow. They're waiting for the perfect wind conditions to get a harvest. Well, I don't want to put that seed out there. You know, uh, the, the wind's not right. The weather's not right. All my seed can get messed up. So years go by and they never get a harvest. Waiting for the right time. Waiting for all things to fall in place. It doesn't happen that way. You know, you have to operating a level of faith. And that's what our, I mean, to, to sit and have a conversation with God about something pending or something coming up, it takes faith to do that, to frame your worlds by your words. It takes faith to even have a consistent exchange with God. After that scripture in Hebrews 11, 3, when you get down to verse 6, it says, without faith it's impossible to please God. For, I mean, to diligently seek him, you have to know that he is. So you have to be looking through faith lenses to even have that communion with God, to have that daily exchange. You know, I, as you guys grow and as the church grows, you, you <laughs> how can I put this? Y'all might not know it, but we'll be interceding for stuff and we see it happening. 
Like when people are going through stuff and they're challenged or they're pulled or even sometimes inconsistency, you know, we just pray. And we watch the change. We, we, and, and for me, it's like, it's, I don't want to say it's pressure, but it's like I can't take a break. You know, we were talking the other day, and, and uh, I left. Uh, we went to, I don't know if we went to work out or something. And my wife said, you ain't finished your reading yet? Because I was in the study for a long time. She said, I said, nah. I said, I'm just starting. She said, huh? I said, well, I said, I had to spend all that time praying for everybody. <laughs> I said, I ain't had no, I said, I ain't get to read yet. <laughs> and what happens is, I, you know, I have a list, too, so I'll be reading. And so some people, are, I'm praying like a common thing for a lot of us. But then there's specific things that people are dealing with I'm praying for. But then there's people that I've run across. I know, like, I see somebody in church, and, you know, y'all might go, oh, okay, I wonder where that person come from. I had been, I was led to pray. The person's on my list, but I was led, oh, don't skip this person. And sure enough, I saw him. And so what that does is that lets me know, like, I mean, like, I can't get off the wall. I have to keep praying. But it's the same thing for each other. We have to, and that's the dangerous thing when you're in your own little world, I'm about to close out here, is you, you even stop interceding. You don't intercede no more. Like, we, we, we don't pray for nobody else. We're not thinking of, we're so busy thinking about, you know, our next bill and, and the next thing that we want to do or, the, or what's concerning us, that's pulling all of our designed ability to intercede for others. And that, that's the dangerous thing. When you read about Paul, Paul, you know, gets out of prison when he comes to the house, knocks on the door. The person didn't believe he was there, but they were praying for him. There's a book uh, called This Present Darkness. And, um, and so you had, you had a young lady. This is, no, uh, that's the first book. The second one is Piercing the Darkness. And it's a great book on seeing what happens in the spirit realm. Spirit realm. So in the first book, is a, is a minister. He sees a guy he wants to minister to, and the guy's going into a bar. So he, he hurries up, goes into the bar, but it shows that when the minister's walking, everywhere he walks, there's two angels with him, rolling with him everywhere he goes. So when he gets to the to bar, he goes to walk in the bar, so the one angel grabbed the other angel's like, whoa, what you doing? He was like, he says, man, we can't let him go in there and look. And it was like demons hovering all over the bar. And he was like, he said, man, we can't go in there. There's not enough prayer coverage. He said, we can't go in there. And then it like, uh, so then the, in the piercing the darkness, there's, in the second book, uh, is is character, young lady, she's running. Demons have been, they was uh, attacking her in her house and attacking her. So she's running. So she's in this, it, this is the pinnacle point. If the demons get her here, it's over. And so people were praying. And as they were praying, the angels, uh, they started to fill up with more light. So when they got to this place where the demons was trying to get her, like, it was so bright. The demons couldn't see her. So when the brightness left, it's like, what happened to her? But, but it showed on the other side of town, the people at the church was interceding and praying for that girl. And it, it made more power available for the angels to protect her from the demons. So sometimes we get so caught up in the everyday, it's a distraction from what our design is. We got to be on that post, on that wall, interceding, making much power avail. We can get anything we want in this life if we spend time in communion with God and praying. Uh, we'll close out with this uh, scripture that we started with, just as a reminder, as a foundation, uh, James 5, 16. It says, confess your faults one to another, pray for one another. So be vulnerable, but pray for one another. That ye may be healed. Look, it said, pray for one another that ye may be healed. <laughs> it says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Heartfelt prayer makes much power available is what the Amplified version of that scripture says. Makes much power available. So are we spending daily time making power available to assist our brothers and sisters? You may not have a car to give them, but you can intercede for them. Are we at least giving, you know, present your body as a living sacrifice, only accept one to him, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do? Are we doing the least we can do for our brother, praying and interceding? If you don't see somebody, are you amplifying their negative or are you interceding for them? Are you really praying and interceding for this situation? Or are you just looking at, well, glad I'm not in their situation, or are you praying for them? 
It's important to pray. It's a discipline, but it'll change your life. And God said, okay, well, you're trying to make something happen for them. I got to make something happen for you. And somebody's supposed to be praying for you. The same measure you meet is measured back to you. You're not praying for them. The people that are assigned to pray for you is not praying for you. When you pray in an unknown tongue, you're, the spirit is un- others, utters groanings that you can't speak. So the spirit is using your vessel to intercede from people in your life, people across the country and all types of stuff. But if you ain't praying at all, you ain't even tapping into the spirit. People aren't getting prayed for. So there's somebody that's not praying for you. All right, so what do we learn today? That's that's a little uh, talked about today.